natives especially and you lose a place like Lahaina it's so historic. Now at six the death toll jumped overnight as wildfires rage across Hawaii. There was um, ashes falling in our backyard and everything it's kind of scary. And crews are still monitoring hot spots after a brush fire here at home. And good morning, I'm Jenny Day in for Evan this morning. Hope it's off to a good start. We are in store for another hot, muggy day, slightly cooler conditions to start, and then we'll heat things back up this weekend and conditions will feel at least a bit drier. It's 6 a.m. and you're up with CBS 8. And we do begin with breaking news out of the East Village where a homicide investigation is underway. A person says they found their roommate dead inside their apartment. This happened around 10 to 45 last night on 14th Street. Police say that the victim was stabbed while officers were investigating. A neighbor told police that her boyfriend was acting violently. Police say they noticed injuries on that man that indicate he may have been connected to the homicide. He has been detained. That block of 14th Street between G and Market Streets will be closed while police investigate. We'll see on top of this. We'll bring you any updates. It's a very, very sad day in Hawaii. Um, it's devastating. More breaking news here. 36 people now confirmed dead as wildfires burned through Hawaii. Glad you're with us here at 6 a.m. Everyone, I'm Eric Connor and I'm Dana Marie McNichol filling in for Netta Arampur. It is absolutely devastating to see thousands of people are now in shelters and evacuation centers around Maui. Yeah, the flames devastating the historic business district of Lahaina, a town in western Maui that attracts tourists from all over the world. In fact, it was once the capital of the Hawaiian Kingdom. Some people jumped into the water to escape the flames. This is not even the worst of it. Still get dead bodies in the water floating and on the seawall. We've been pulling people out since last night, trying to save people's lives. The fires are being fueled by winds from Hurricane Dora hundreds of miles away. Visitors waiting in long lines at airports trying to get off the island. The acting governor issued an emergency proclamation discouraging non all essential travel. Smoke, it's ravishing the downtown Lahaina. My cousins that live in Lahaina have evacuated. So, you know, it's, it's um, concerning. This morning at San Diego, fearing for her family members in Hawaii, Denise Dudo Meyer just flew back from Maui before the fire broke out. She made it out safely and departed from the Kahului Airport, the main airport on the island. The airport is now a shelter for 2000 travelers whose flights are canceled or who have recently arrived on the island. This morning, San Diegans are stepping up to help people affected by the fires in Maui. 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu is collecting donations right now. You can drop them off at their locations in San Diego, Oceanside and South Bay. They're asking for non perishable food items, clothes and shoes and bottled water. We're going to have a report from Maui coming up here at 630. And now we do want to get to a brush fire here at home. This morning, firefighters are keeping an eye on hotspots after the so-called bunny fire in Ramona broke out. Yeah, this started near Chuck Wagon Road yesterday morning, and we want to check in with CBS 8's Chris Grove live outside Cal Fire headquarters there with the latest. Uh, what's the update here, Chris? Yeah, good morning. And again, things have been pretty quiet in and around this area compared to yesterday, where, of course, we saw a number of evacuations take place, roads that were closed and fire crews scrambling uh, to make sure that they could get those fire that fire, I should say, under control. Now, the latest information that we have at this time is that this fire burned more than 180 acres, that right now it is at 20% containment, that forward progress has been stopped. So again, they have made a good deal of progress here. We also know that evacuations have been lifted and that the roads, for instance, like San Vicente Road, that has since reopened. Now, as for how this fire started, uh, we know that it was initially again reported in the very early morning hours sometime, uh, you know, or between 10 and 11 a.m. Then as of 1154, just before noon, it grew to 10 to 15 acres and then eventually blew up from there. Now we saw more than 300 firefighters. Uh, we saw a number of engines being used as well too, and eight hand trucks as well as helicopters and those evacuees that we spoke about. We caught up with some of them at a nearby middle school. They had this to say, especially the ones uh, that again were just about to move. Funny thing, we're moving out of state, so everything's in boxes. So the only thing I could grab were the animals and some documents, and that was about it. 
Oh my gosh. So. When are you guys supposed to move? We're supposed to leave this weekend. I've been watching all summer long and the fires have been, they've been putting them out. <laughs> like, they really haven't been getting that far out of control. And this is, uh, of course, another good reminder to always be prepared to make sure that you have your things at the ready that you would need in an evacuation. Now, of course, in that situation, those folks were just about to move. They were getting ready to get out of Southern California, to get out of Ramona and potentially this fire area. So uh, really a unique circumstance right there. Thankfully, again, uh, it does appear with those evacuations lifted that they're going to be able to go home, resume their move. Uh, but for now, we are going to wait to see if there's any further updates here on this bunny fire as of this morning. Eric and Dana Marie. All right, Chris, thanks for the updates. Stay with CBS 8 for the latest on the wildfires. We'll have all your updates posted on CBS 8.com. You can also follow us on social media or download the CBS 8 app. New this morning, at least one person is dead following this crash in Oceanside. Happened just before 9 last night on Interstate 5, just north of the 78. You can see there are multiple vehicles involved, including a semi truck. Still not clear what led up to this crash or if any arrests have been made in this. We'll continue to update you as more information comes into our newsroom. And this just in here, consumer prices rose 3.2% in July from a year ago. The Consumer Price Index report was just released a few minutes ago. This is a little higher than June's inflation rate of 3%. Overall, inflation has come down sharply from last summer's peak of 9.1%. The findings will likely play a role in the Federal Reserve's upcoming decision on interest rates. We'll see how the markets react here later this hour. And today a hearing will be held regarding the estate of missing Chula Vista woman Maya Miliete. Maya's husband Larry is currently charged with her murder. His attorney says no mortgage payments have been made on the family's home. Maya's sister is asking a judge to appoint a conservator to facilitate the sale and avoidance of a foreclosure. Now Larry's parents are currently living in the home with him and Maya's three children. Meantime, Larry's trial has been delayed until next year. And this morning, Camp Pendleton is responding to accusations that a 14 year old girl found in a Camp Pendleton barracks with sex traffic and raped. The girl went missing on her home from a Spring Valley on June 10th. More than two weeks later, she was located inside the barracks. A Marine was taken into custody for questioning, but no charges were filed. Now, in a statement to CBS 8, the first Marine Logistics Group says they, quote, continue to take allegations regarding this Marine very seriously. At this time, the command is cooperating with law enforcement to ensure that ongoing investigation is complete and thorough. They also say they will consider appropriate charges, if any, after a preliminary hearing. This comes as the family of the minor calls for criminal charges. New this morning, a hiker from San Diego sadly has died in Tucson, Arizona. Authorities say 46 year old Kyle Chance went missing while out on a hike on Tuesday morning. Crews found his body later that day. His exact cause of death not released yet, but so far it's been hot there, right? In this month of August, over 2,500 people in Arizona have gone to the ER for heat related illness. Of course, the heat uh, not as big of an issue here, but it has been hot lately. A little bit of a cool down. I enjoyed yeah. last night putting the windows open. That was nice. Absolutely. And gosh, it just breaks my heart for that man and his family because here he is trying to just enjoy nature, do something good for himself, but really be mindful. Even if you're in great shape, it is hot outside. So. Oh, just again, thinking of that family, no doubt about it. Starting the day out with cloud coverage. And like Eric said, it is cooler in the overnight hours. We definitely get that relief. Open the window, let that fresh air in because today will feel hot and muggy. It'll be sticky. And then again, we should dry out and return to warmer conditions this weekend. Here though, the entire county is really blanketed with this marine layer. It will be thick and a bit stubborn to burn off, but just know that it will and it eventually give way to mostly sunny skies. This is the next 12 hours. So again, cloud coverage really to start the day and then heading into that noon 2 p.m. hour. Still some patchy clouds, but at least a little bit more sunshine. All right, current temperatures right now 68 in Encinitas, 69 in Poway, 67 in Rom Ramona. My goodness, we are thinking of you. I hope that this humid moisture that's in the air helps in that firefight and let's all just be mindful. 84 uh, right now in Borrego. Go Springs 70 in downtown San Diego. It'll be about 73 degrees today in Chula Vista. That's the expected high for um, the day. 75 in Carlsbad, 79 up in Fallbrook, 
um, and 75 in the mountains in Julian. So again, a little bit of a, a little bit of a cool down before we return to drier air and hotter temperatures. This is kind of a look at the next week or so. Um, we'll get to that eight day microclimate forecast more thoroughly in just a bit, but again, 70s along the coast and 80s further inland. All right, let's take a look now at traffic. Our commute down south. A look at the border wait times right from the CBP website. Currently 115 minutes for the general line at the San Ysidro Port of Entry and 80 minutes for the general line at the Otay Mesa Port of Entry. Eric. All right, still ahead here, a presidential candidate in South America has just been assassinated. Plus what we're learning about a man who's made threats against President Joe Biden. And are you planning a trip to Europe? We verify what will soon you'll be needing before flying over there.